Peyton Mayer, welcome to an actor's spares. How are you doing, brother? Good. How are you doing? Ah, uh, better now, man. I'm seeing you. We were just speaking. We have a mutual friend. What up, Sterling? Uh, dude, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. I just got to check out the film, and you got started so young, and that's so radical, man. I'm so envious of that, and I've really wanted to talk to someone like you for a long time who who went through the child circuit because a lot of episodes I have have, have been people that have already gone through it into the adult thing and then people that just haven't been able to make it yet into the adult thing. So it's awesome that you've made the transition and are starting to make it and this incredible iconography, iconography that you have before you and everything that's in store for you, man. It's, it's amazing. You should be so excited, dude. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. It's been, uh, you know, I started young. It's been 10 years. It's been a long journey of, uh, of building it all up. And it was a lot more work than I thought, but it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I'm just getting to know you, man. And, and it's awesome what you're doing, dude. And I know, you know, man, for all that's to be said about Disney, it can be a wonderful thing. And it can be a troubling thing. And it, and it, and it, it kind of ends up being more trouble for a lot of people than, than most. So you should be so proud of yourself for coming up and, and being a total humble dude and being here. And I really, I value that, man. That's so awesome. Ah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Disney's, uh, you know, they're unique and a lot of people go, a not, lot not talking shit about Disney, just the whole, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's unique because you get such a wide variety of, of people and perceptions that people take from it. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool being able to be from the inside of it to be able to know. I feel like I would always be wondering what Disney was like if I didn't go through it. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally, man. Well, if it's cool with you, man, let's start at the beginning. Where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. What was that like? <laughs> if I wanted to go uh, to the movies or to the bowling alley or to the food court, we had to go through uh, the casinos. So, wow. Oh, because yeah. they're all in like Caesars and all that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's so it was, crazy. It was, yeah. It was wild. It was so wild. Were, were so, you in close proximity to this trip then? I was about 15 minutes. Wow. So, so what, yeah, one street just straight down every street. There's like, you know, eight down this, you'd go down a couple of streets and eight streets would take you straight down to the strip. And that's, that's walking or driving 15? That's driving 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. And, and what's it like growing up in, you know, a 21 year old city when you're a child, do you have an awareness of that? You know? Yeah. I mean, um, there's kind of, there's a, there's a, there's two perceptions. Um, you grow up looking at it. Uh, you're obviously exposed to everything at a very young age, uh, addiction, gambling, drunks, uh, alcoholics, drugs, whatever it is, you're all established to it at a very young age. And some people, I have a lot of friends that would go that way and think that was cool. That was what they were meant to do. So they would do it as well. Yeah. And then there was people like me that would saw it being, you know, all abused. Like when I'm, I'm over 21 now. So when I go back to Vegas, I love to go back because now I can actually sit at the tables and like grab drinks and stuff. But it's very you know, I know how to gamble. I know how to handle my drinks in Vegas. I know how to handle my behavior. Um, but a lot of that kind of carried through to the rest of my life because I was exposed so young. I was like, man, you really got to watch yourself because people yeah. really let themselves go. This, this is the city where people come and forget who they are. Yeah, and dude, just, I'm, I'm, I'm five years sober off drugs and alcohol. So I get it, man. You know, yeah. I've had, I've had many, too many bottoms in Vegas. So I, I understand that city well, but that's yeah. cool, man. I'm, I'm curious then, you know, I ask everyone this, what, what did your parents do? Where did the arts bug come for you? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was baseball, football, basketball, regular sports kid. My mom was, uh, a cocktail waitress at MGM. My dad was a pit boss. Um, basically no arts whatsoever in my family. And I did a play in the third grade. Uh, and it was for like a, a big high school auditorium. Um, and I remember it being so enlightening. Like I was like, wow, why was that so fun? Yeah. Um, and it took me about two or three years after that to be able to ask my mom and be like, Hey, I want to do this. Yeah. She said, no, of course. Um, and then we basically just, we did this little 
tryout. I mean, it was one of those like no, you know, like someone tells you about acting and you go to this tryout and it was basically like this no name, nothing tryout. And luckily there was actually one agent there that wanted to pick me up and she brought me to LA and I basically just started driving back and forth with my mom. Wow. For auditions. Uh, Way to go mom. Gigs. Yeah, my mom. Yeah, what a bro. That's awesome. Yeah, she she plugged it. <laughs> That's so rad, man. And and when you got that agent, what kind of stuff were you going up for? At at how old were you? Nine, ten. I was wow. ten. Yeah, ten years so, old. I was just uh, just modeling at the time. Oh, got it, got it. And so you were doing like print work back in the comp card days. Yep, yep. Wow. I was doing the Target catalogs and the Kohl's catalogs and. Just basically modeling was just, it was just paying the bills. You know, it was, yeah. you know, all the drives and hotels going back and forth. It was really just, let's just do as many modeling jobs. And then finally I started bugging her. I was like, I want to act. Like, I want to do some, I, you know, I watched George Lopez and stuff. I was like, I want to act. I want to be on TV. Her being your agent or your mom? Both. Okay. Awesome. I ended up, I told my mom and then we told the agent and the agent was like, no, you should just do modeling. Just stick to modeling. Wow. What, and, what bad uh, advice. We left her. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm glad and, we did. <laughs> yeah, me too, dude. And so was your mom, once she saw you, you know, starting to get the modeling things, was, was she supportive then? Yeah. I mean, she was always, you know, my mom's one of those like ride or die in belief. Yeah. Um, and luckily I had that on my side. Like everything was always, we're going to do it. It wasn't, I don't know if, or like, can we do this? It was always, we're going to do it. She's just very intuitive. So we would just, I just basically stuck with her and I was like, how do we make this happen? And then all yeah. of a sudden doors would start to just open. You know, I asked for that. And then we ended up doing one of these photo shoots for Target. And the guy was like, do you have a manager? Like uh, for acting. And we were like, no. And he was like, I'm going to give him a call real quick. Gave him a call. We ended up sitting down with him and he signed me. And then he was pull, immediately pulled me from their agency and went to a different agency. And we just basically started auditioning. Wow. Damn. That's yeah. crazy. Do you yeah. remember who it was, the manager? His name was Ken Jacobson. Okay. Is he still in the game? He actually uh, passed away okay. unexpectedly. Yeah. But did that get you into the casting director rooms where people started to become fans of your work? Yes. Started getting me into casting and um, a couple of general meetings, which was, you know, I mean, generals are great. So you can sit down with casting and, and have a chat. So he got me into a couple of auditions and generals and then bam, I booked uh, Disney started off. Wow, dude. Yeah. So huge. Do you, I mean, obviously when I was a kid, I watched the Disney channel. Were you watching it like as a kid? Yeah. I mean, I remember, Watching late night, I mean, George, it was George Lopez and Friends were on more than anything. Got it. Um, but I do remember every once in a while, uh, you know, throw on some, uh, like, Hannah Montana. Oh, um, yeah. I was perfect for that generation. Like, randomly, it would come on. I had two older brothers, so I rarely got the TV. But when I did, I was like, you know, throw on Nick at Night or Disney Channel or something yeah. like that. Um, but that Hannah Montana and, like, Wizards of Waverly Place, random. Yeah, classic sort of stuff. Yeah, they were just great. They were great shows. Uh, were, they, were they still on air when you were auditioning? Uh, yes. Yeah. Did you did you we, ever audition for any of them? No, I didn't. I was uh, too young. Yeah, I was too young. Wow. So I'm curious then because I'm a little bit older than you. So Boy Meets World was a huge part of my childhood. Did you have any relationship with that show? at all a little bit i remember my brothers watching it so i had two older brothers so they were uh when i told them about the reboot uh i obviously knew about the show but i don't remember like details of like the episodes or like what happened i just remember yeah. it being on i remember the boy meets world logo yeah 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 I, was, I remember seeing it and i was like yo they're remaking uh boy meets world and it's gonna be girl meets world and they were like what are you kidding me <laughs> it was like one of their favorite shows that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's so cool. And was was that your first big booking? Yeah, it was. Um, I get a little confused on the timeline. I, it was Girl Meets World and then Dog with a Blog. Uh, 
happen like simultaneously. Wow. Yeah. Cause so we you were bouncing pilot. back and forth between we production. Back forth. Yeah. And then well, we did the pilot and then I was back to episodes with them and then we waited like six months for the pilot to get picked up and then it was off. Wow. And so what yeah. was that? I mean, that's kind of like, you know, few people are lucky enough to, to learn and on a set experience and that's their Juilliard. What was it like to go from, you know, being this wide eyed kid who had modeling, who wanted to act to suddenly you're one of the leads on this show that's already got a following because it's a, a new version. You know, what, what did you have an awareness of that going in? I just remember um, I had my Instagram on private you know, just for like the girls back home and whatever. It, that's what my yeah. Instagram was used for. I didn't, you know, connecting with friends. That's all it was. And then I remember they made the announcement that I was cast. And I think I had like 1100 followers or something like that. And I remember un, someone was like, yo, take your thing off private. Like, this is like going to be important. And I took it off private and then I just shot up to like, I think it was like 85,000. Wow. And, yeah, like instantly, like it just like I unclicked it and then it went 85,000. And then in a matter of time, I was like 150, 200,000 before the show even like really took off. Yeah. And does it, does a company or a mother or an agent like that get in there and tell you how to work that social media thing? Because when I was coming up, you know, we were on, on the MySpace days. So you couldn't, it wasn't a thing as much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, um, you know, they guide you. Disney Disney does like, and I'm glad they do. They do like some little media training, they call it. Like, hey, uh, just so you guys are aware, um, you know, no profanity. Like you guys have kids that you guys are and that you guys are going to have following you. So it's very important to set the precedence that you guys want to set yeah. for yourselves and make sure you guys are carrying the brand as, as strongly as you can. Um, and we have very high standards. If you want to work here, it's one of those things that we really, we have high standards. And I was, I was loving it. Cause at the time I was like, of course, like I've always heard that Disney's very strict and like yeah. the contracts are, I knew it signing the contract. I was like, they're, they're strict and that's how they should be. They have kids paying attention to their platform and a large audience of people. So it makes sense. Totally, man. And, and do you remember, you know, like, was was uh, Ben or Danielle, were they helpful at all to you having gone through that experience themselves when they were young? Yes, of course. Uh, they were awesome, too. Oh, oh that's great. Dude. I <laughs> love hearing great, that. Uh, they were so great. Um, and then actually Ryder, Ryder was great, too. Uh, oh, I forgot Ryder was. That's right. Yeah, Ryder directed a lot of them. Um, wow. He was in it, too, but he directed a lot. Um, but they were they were so good. Um, they taught us, you know, just like how fast it happens, you know, yeah. just like enjoying the process, learning as much as you can. And like, they were just so helpful because, you know, they, it, it was almost a shock for them because they were so young and when they started and then compared to now, they're just like, we can't believe like this was that big of a deal for you guys. Like having to re like redo this and live in the parents' shoes and have you guys come in and be so excited to like meet us and like be here with us is like so special. And we're going to just basically mom and dad, you guys, and just kind of guard you guys through, you know, uh, Daniel was definitely a lot more about, um, you know, the fame, like what happens, um, yeah going through the fame process and kind of what happens with being your, you know, very safe and figuring out the safe ways, especially for the girls. She really like helped them and uh, guided a lot of questions. And Ben was obviously Ben's a clown, man. He's yeah. just so funny, dude. I had so much fun with him on set. We would just crack each other up. That's awesome, man. And so I imagine, I mean, I know they do onset tutoring, but did that make you have to move to LA finally or? Yes. Um, as soon as I booked the show, I was like, all right, we're just going to have to do it. Um, ended up moving to LA and then almost every single weekend I drove home to Vegas still to go hang out with, with friends. Yeah. yeah. Was that a tough time being away from like your, your social network at home while adjusting to this new kind of production family lifestyle? Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, I was 12. 12 when I was cast and I think I was 13 by the time the pilot got picked up and we started um 
you just felt like you missed your childhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, totally. don't, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I didn't miss like going to the movies. Oh, this chick turned me down. Oh, this night wasn't that fun. Oh, we played basketball. Those aren't like memories I really think about now anyways. Yeah. So it, it didn't bother me uh, nowadays. And I can only imagine myself in 10 years, it won't bother me. But the amount of work that it did for my life, for the rest of my life was yeah. so worth it and such a big impact that it really just doesn't, it didn't matter that I missed that part of my childhood. And I kind of, you know, I, us in the cast, we had fun, but I mean, it was a lot of work, but we had, we had our own little fun that was worth it, you know? And because you're under 18, don't they have like limited work hours each day legally? Yeah, they would do, I think it's like 12 and a half. I was, I was the oldest kid on set. So once you reach 16, obviously the rules change a little bit. And then once you reach 18, obviously it's off to the races, but wow. uh, 16 for sure. You can be on set alone. Um, one of the parents would sign to watch, you know, yeah. or just, you know. Um, but yeah, it was like from the start, we would be, you know, up at set was downtown Los Angeles. Um, so it was basically 25, 30 minutes to get there. So our call time would be 5 30 AM. Um, and we would do school for two hours and then we'd go through the whole works, whatever it was, rehearsal or filming or whatever it was. And then we'd do another hour of school at the end of the day. Um, and we, after traffic from downtown Los Angeles, I'd be home at like six, five 30. And did you guys have a live studio audience? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So what was that experience like? Because that's, you know, the closest you can get in TV to theater, you know, because you have yeah. that reaction. Yeah. That's what it felt like. It yeah. felt really cool to be able to have that live audience there and be able to feed the energy. Yeah. I can only imagine, man. And, and having come from friends and that kind of like, you know, viewership, that must've been so cool to then be the guy that's doing that, you know? Yeah. It was awesome. It was really cool. And it was, uh, I remember that we started, you know, second episode, we did the live audience and it was just like, we immediately loved it. And we're like, we're doing it every single time. Wow. No questions asked. And were you, I mean, obviously I know you had school, but were you doing an acting class as well? Or did you have like an onset coach or uh, I know sometimes those are a part of it or maybe not. You know, it was one of those things, there was an onset coach and stuff, but you know, that's really just, run lines and stuff not really uh, maybe a little performance notes but the real acting um started with this great coach i had she actually i got a little tattoo for her because she oh, passed away uh, dude so sorry oh it's all good you know it's one of those things she uh she was battling lung cancer for years oh, and man. um we were working since i was 13 and she was one of those like you know acting coaches like they're yeah. like some of them are like moms some yeah. of them are like therapists. Like totally. they, really, they know you better than anyone on the planet. Cause you're yeah. diving so deep emotionally. And, um, and it was one of those things that she would teach me, uh, like I would be working on a, a Disney show and she would teach me like the complete opposite, like dark <laughs> drama, you know, we'd be doing like drug addict roles and like heroin addicts and like, anger and like these super mean roles or like whatever it was was like cussing and total opposite of disney so yeah. simultaneously i was working like you know it feels like barely acting on this disney show just like a kid yeah um, and then bam we would go to work and it would just be three or four hours twice a week of just intensive emotional work and script breakdown I love that, dude. That's so rad. Not, not a lot of actors would do that. You know, usually some people get so comfortable in a job. I love and have so much respect that you did that, man. Now, I'm curious, with being locked into a show like that, does the contract or just the realities of production prevent you from auditioning for other things in the downtime? You can audition, but Disney's strict. You know, you can't yeah. do... Uh... You, you can't, can't be snorting do. cocaine in Wolf of Wall yeah. Street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scarface ain't coming around for Yeah. It. That's so funny, man. Reminds yeah. me of that Entourage episode. But, uh, <laughs> dude, that, that's so rad, man. So then, you know, how are you liking L.A. besides, like, the production? Did you start to find your tribe, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, it took me 
once I, once I got my car, um, it was a different world, you know, cause as a kid, my mom just LA, she's just like, you're not going to go walking around downtown. You're not going to go walk everywhere. But once I got a car, I really just, I was able to live, you know, yeah. found, found a whole new group or, you know, some of them regular friends that just work regular jobs and then ended up finding some, for them, very successful actors. And then even like Sterling and all them, you know, like I found like large groups of friends that I would, you know, the LA circuit that you just, yeah, I know well. start to just meet huge groups of people and you just yeah. circle through that horrible wow. phase. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though, man. LA is a city though, did, you know, coming from Vegas, was it a pleasant change or did you miss Vegas as the city? I didn't miss Vegas, but I hated LA. Oh, see, I feel the same way. If you don't mind expanding on that, what was it about LA that, you know, it's just a, it's a dark place, man. It is dude. Energy is just, it's so heavy here. And I'm not one of, I'm not just talking about one of those energy people, but I swear the energy here, the people, what they, what they mean, what they want from you, what they do is just, it's not community. And it's it's not not sincere. No. No one will just wave at you on the side. Yeah. Of, you know, everyone's got an agenda. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. What about you? What, 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 why do you, why did you not like it? Because I came there when I was 25, I wasn't yet sober okay. and uh, I was doing the audition grind and it's just like everyone there shares the same dream where the chances of them achieving that dream is never but everyone moves there anyway. And you go to Starbucks. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. You go to Equinox or, yeah, you know, LA fitness. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. And it's just like, you can't escape it. And everywhere you go, there's a billboard to remind you how much better someone else is doing than you, or, you know, a friend of yours. And you're just like, Oh man, this is just not healthy. And so I was like, you know, in New York, even though theater and things are here, it's not so in your face. You go to a bar, you go to anywhere, you know, someone's a dentist, someone's an orthodontist. You might be the only actor in there, you know, whereas LA, everyone is somehow in it, you know? Yeah. But uh, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough place. Yeah. So then how long girl meets world made it three or four seasons. We did three, three Three. seasons. Yeah. And what was that ride like, you know, because I know it was like a really popular run and people loved it. You know, was that, was that a really enjoyable time in your life? Because when you're young, you know, man, you think you're so old or you just want to be old, but you then realize who you are at 12 and who you are at 15 are totally different people. You know what I mean? And same thing, 15 to 18. So what was it like changing through that show, like physically and mentally? Well, you know, it was, uh, I would love to say it was great and it was easy. Um, that was one of the toughest times of my life. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do with, uh, it sucks when you're, you know, 12 through, I'd say 12, yeah, 12. I don't know how it is for girls, but for guys, 12 through 18 is such a time that like, there's so much to figure out. Um, and there's so many different directions to go and there's so many different things to perceive certain ways. And with my family life, like my mom was amazing. My dad was, you know, strong, he's a strong guy, you know, yeah. very, uh, stern with direction and, you know, just had his plan and his way. And, you know, I respect him so much because, you know, when he turned 22, he had a kid. And he stuck with it and, and dove down and became a dad and, and did his thing. You know what I yeah. mean? He wasn't someone that ran away from it. He's someone that battled it, but obviously he had uh, he had a tough time with it. It was something that was difficult and something that, you know, obviously it was like something in him wanted something more Yeah. and he had to have money. He had to have a job. So his direction was a little different. And luckily I had this, this mom that was just such a positive light on, you know, if I were to talk to my dad about acting, it would not even a question, but my yeah. mom, she's just so positive about us doing things that we love to do. Um, and during that time, my parents were going through a divorce from 
15 to it was about 14 to 17. Oh, dude, uh, I'm so sorry. My parents uh, got divorced in two, so I don't remember it. So I uh, can't imagine dude. what it's like to go through it at that age. It sucks. It's yeah. horrible. I was just begging for them to break up. Like, please, just split apart. Yeah. Please. You know what I mean? It was one of those things that I just was like, looking back at it now, I can laugh because I was like, that was such a bad time. Oh, God. But it was like, you know, work was great to get away from all of that. Um, and work also had its tough moments because, you know, the cast and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. You know, you're on a show for three years together. You, you, you're like family. So it's yeah. another round of family. So it was one there and then one home and then one there and then one home. It was constant, this battle. And then you, as a 15 year old guy, you have this battle in your own mind of yeah, what do I want to be? What do I want to do? What does it mean to be a man for me? What does it totally. mean? What do I want to do? Um, so that was definitely one of the toughest times of my life, but I love the way that I, I got out of it. I yeah, it. man. That's so beautiful. How, how did you, if not just acting, like, was there, you know, fitness or surfing? Was there something that helped you, you know, surmount all of this? You know, it was traveling. Mm. Loved it. Yeah. Traveling. I was so in LA for so long working and stuff that when I just took off, uh, when Disney was done, I took off. I was like, I'm going to go, I'm not going to college. I don't want to do college. I know exactly what I want to do with my life, but I have to fix this to be able to do it. You were 17 when it was over? I was uh, 18. 18. Okay. Wow. So yeah. you were an adult proper. I was an adult. It was perfect. Yeah. Was like, I'm taking off. Um, and basically just started traveling. And that was one of those things that uh, blew my mind, seeing these different cultures and all this different style of living and it was In, just international or domestic everything i did yeah. i did a, a bunch of states and stuff obviously you know going through the states there's a couple states i wanted to do but uh you know i took off to canada i took off to australia i took off to hong kong uh, a couple places in china singapore um europe uh, at all new zealand i started hitting europe when i got older um got yeah, just recently I've I've done uh, Amsterdam, Switzerland, and then Italy. Um, I just did Italy. Italy is unbelievable. Oh God, I but love it. It's one of those. It's one of those resets for me. You know what I mean? Like it'll last me six months before I get the bug again. Yeah. But it's like I need. It's something that I've realized by myself. Once or twice a year, I have to just go. Yeah. I have to get out of here. I have to get out, especially LA. When I come here, I'm like I'm in distress because it is a bubble. Yeah. And you, there is not a world outside of this bubble. Yeah. And you forget that there's an entirely different world. Where none of it matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's so great. rad, man. I'm, I'm the same way, dude. I love you. You're great. Um, that's awesome, man. And, and when you started, when that show ends and that's been your anchor piece, do you tell your agent, hey, dude, I need some time off? Like, do you... Do you have that conversation or are you still kind of accepting auditions or offers as they come in? Yeah. So the big thing was right from the movie ending. Um, I actually, my manager uh, took me to this little event. We were at this event and I ended up bumping into this girl and she looked at me and she was like, I don't know why you look familiar and you're so cute. You're so this. And she just started talking to me and I was like, Oh, cool. Uh, she's a nice girl. She was like, you should stop into my office. Uh, I'm an agent and I would love to sit down with you. And, you know, I'm sitting there with my manager. I'm like, I'm sorry, I already have an agent. Like, yeah. we're, we're doing well together. And my manager just looks at me and goes, we'll be in. We'll be in. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then she took off and we ended up talking. And she was like, you know, I'm from the, or my manager was like, she's from CAA. So no we're going to go, we're gonna go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no problem. I yeah. I signed with CAA um, and ended up doing uh, two months of auditions with them. And my acting coach uh, died and I had never worked on an audition or a script without her. Yeah. So my life crashed my career, my life, my personal life, like my head, everything just collapsed. And of course I'm two months into CAA 
And I end up, you know, calling my agent and I'm like, I, I, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but like, this was my heart of my business. Like yeah. my entire heart, my whole heart was just crashed. It was ripped apart. There was nothing to do. I was like, go even thinking about an audition just brings me to tears. I mean, it just like hurts. It's a bad situation. And I don't know how I'm going to do in the rooms because reading the script, it looks foreign to me without her guidance, without her questions, without her, you know, without her levels. Um, And from then it was about two more months uh, of just kind of just horrible auditions. I knew it when I walked in just horrible rooms. Um, And I was, you were mourning, man, you know, I I should have taken more time, but I was beating myself up at that time. That was one of the trickiest, you know, dissecting parts. Um, And then actually my agents at CAA, one uh, took off from the company and became a manager at, I think, Untitled or something like that. She took off. And then my other uh, agent took off from CAA and went to ICM. So my partners basically split. Wow. And I was like, whole world crashing down. Yeah. I was like, I don't have an agent right now. My manager doesn't know what to do. And my acting coach is gone. All right. Completely reset and said, I need to just go. Told my manager, he was like, this isn't a good idea. Like we got stuff to do, you know, like there's a lot of things we need to do now. Yeah. And I was like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> like, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Uh, ended up taking off for just, you know, sporadic weeks for the next three months, just sporadic weekends, just going different places and just fixing it. I didn't even realize I was fixing everything, but I was taking a shower, like a it's a shower washing everything off that I needed to. Yeah. So beautifully wow. put, man. And I'm sorry for your loss on that. It, wow. So tough, man. I, I've lost a lot of people that are near and dear. So I relate, man. And, and so then when you did come back, did you feel not that you're ever over it, but you know, did you feel less despondent? Let's just put it that way. You know, When I got back, uh, we signed with a new agency and then my manager died. Yeah. Oh my God. It was like, it was like, I I didn't come back to like, here we go. Yeah. I came. Another fucking loss, dude. And he was the, you know, he was the one who started me. He was the one who first got me into Disney. And the first reason I'm here, he introduced me to my acting coach. He was, he was everything. He was the brain. I call him the brain and my acting coach is the heart. Yeah. And it was so, a reason I get the tattoo is because they were my childhood teachers. Yeah. They literally taught me. Se- second how, fa- father and mother, you know? Father and mother. They yeah. taught me how to grow into a man, um, career and personal. Um, and when he passed away, um, it was game time. This one didn't mourn. This one was, I now have a purpose to do it. I now have a team of angels or whatever you want to call it around me that are guiding me and gave me things to take this forward. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't more than anything. It was straight business. It was straight. I left my agency at the time too. I was with Gersh. I left Gersh and I just sat on my own. I had no reps, nothing. No way. Ended up. Yeah. Ended up meeting this guy. Uh, Brian Shear and and we linked and then he introduced me to my new manager Nick and then they introduced me to Innovative and through COVID about a year and a half he's all that damn dude I'm proud of you bro <laughs> man thank yeah you. God what a story dude holy shit we need to make a memoir <laughs> oh man we're gonna get there one day yeah dude so yeah. you know. Obviously, it sucked for the entire world having this, you know, for all actors, whether you had credits or not, like you were auditioning and then now this business is collapsed and there's a gigantic question mark if and when it can ever be done again. So did you stay in L.A. through the pandemic? I was in L.A. for, yeah, a a good chunk of it. So you really felt it like we did here in New York. You saw it. You felt it. And very real here. Yeah, man. And so then 
once you got the email or the phone call about this, how did you feel about, did you, did you know she's all that? Did you know the original? I knew the original. Um, obviously I had to rewatch it because it was the same thing as the boy meets world. I was like, this was right at the time that I don't, I don't remember the details of it, but I remember the movie itself. I remember yeah. the bet. I remember Freddie and Paul Walker, you know, like I remember the boys. Oh, I totally movie. forgot Paul Walker was in that yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I remember the movie, but I didn't remember the details. So I remember rewatching it. Um, yeah. And it's just such a, it was such a great movie. Wow. Yeah, it is, man. That that one really held up and it, it I got the chance to see this one, dude. You were great, man. Oh, you man. know, was that was that was that fun getting to kind of just I mean, I'm not giving away any spoilers. The trailer, you know, you play the kind of funny, you know, douchebag. Yeah, douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolute tool. Yeah. Man. Yeah, dude. But that, those are the most fun times because you can just like be you know, Zoolander ridiculous, you know? It was awesome. I just, I let go. I was yeah. like, I'm going to dive into this other dude and just, I've never been able to play that. And it I was, was going to say, you've like not that. done anything like that before, no. right? Damn. Nothing like it. And this is like your first role as like a man-man, right? Yeah. I mean, this is like, you know, I did American Housewife, but that was still teenager-ish and still, you know. You it, very much look like a man in this. Yeah, no. A you. very handsome dashing oh, man <laughs> yeah i appreciate it but yeah it's 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 finally time to play some grown-up roles and i'm yeah I'm really excited about it that's awesome man talk to me you know so you you filmed this during covid did that lift your spirits having this purpose and you know finally doing something you know through all these horrible just god i mean catastrophic things you went through that led to this new opportunity with a wonderful company like Netflix. And, you know, what did that really kind of lift your spirits in a lot of ways? Yeah. And it was one of those things, you know, it started, uh, Netflix wasn't even involved. It started as uh, Miramax. Oh, sh- isn't that owned I by love, Disney? I love Miramax. I thought Miramax is part of Disney. No, it was, uh, no, Miramax is their own. I think they're partnered with uh, Paramount now. Okay, got it. Got but it. yeah, they, you know, they did, you know, Good Will Hunting and stuff. Yeah. Like that. They've totally. done some great films back in the day. And uh, I was super excited about that. I was yeah. like, Miramax, like, this is a real studio. Like, they do films. Like, yeah. this is awesome. Um, and then Addison Ray was attached. And then uh, Andrew Panay and Jennifer Gibgott, who are just huge producers. And then Mark Waters was attached. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, yeah. let me, let me do this. What's going on? What's, what's going on? Read the script and then audition for it. And the, the weird part was this was my first audition in COVID and it was like October. So I did a person or no, it was okay. Zoom. Yeah. And that's what was so weird. It was zoom. I was yeah. like, I, it was like this. I remember sitting down and I was like, how, I mean, it's a different medium to channel. Th- yeah. Yeah. I mean, how does this work? How are we reading? Um, but I actually, the whole reason, I mean, COVID even happened is the reason I booked this film. It's weird how everything happens for a reason, but it's the yeah. entire reason I booked the film. Because having to be on Zoom, I did things as an actor that I would have never done in person. Wow. I love that, man. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, uh, you know, shooting it, was it fun? Despite, you know, fun. being masked up and, you know, did you guys have fun? Oh, we had such a blast. I mean, it was so cool to be able to, like, you know, you, you know, New York, LA, like we were locked down. Yeah. For a good, there was a good three or four months that like, I did not leave my home. Like, it yeah, was, there was like a curfew in, in place. It was right? curfew, it was yeah. A curfew. It was a, it was crazy. I mean, there was choppers and Humvees going through at one point. Like, yeah, we got an Amber alert that was like, don't call 911. <laughs> it was just like an absolute like they were like apocalyptic you know? i was just sitting there with my baseball bat like all right well <laughs> every man fun. for himself <laughs> you know quarantine loop yeah, yeah. Fun. um but having being able to go on set after all that was just you know obviously we're tested four or five days a week yeah uh, we're quarantined afterward but it was one of those projects that like every time we got on set everyone was just so excited to just interact and be there and just work and do something we all loved. And 
we all just knew it was such a fun project. It was like a feel good movie, which we felt good making it. You know? Yeah. Which the world needs, you know, man, still, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, you turn on the news now, it's darkness, 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 you know what I mean? And Social the world media. needs, yeah, man. Um, what about Addison? Did you know her yet? You know, or I didn't know her. I knew a lot of her mutual friends, but we hadn't, we hadn't crossed paths. I think if COVID wasn't a thing, we would have crossed paths eventually because we, we had too many friends in common, but, um, getting to meet her on the set, of course, I'm like, you're a TikToker. Let's see how, you know, acting, there's obviously a professionalism on set that is very strict. Like we all kind of follow guidelines that are kind of unsaid, but they're all there. Yeah. Uh, Let's see how like TikToker can come in and, and, Let's see what happens. And I yeah. met her and she's just the sweetest girl. Yeah, I, I'll be blunt. I was surprised how good she was, you know? Did great. No, she, yeah. she did great. I was very proud because like she had so much pressure on her back. I can only imagine. She had so much pressure and she is so sweet and she just, she killed it, man. I was yeah. so happy for her. That's so awesome, dude. And And then getting that, you know, did that really start to, you know, I mean, I know it's coming out in a week, but did that start to get, more phone calls on, on Peyton's radar, you know, things start coming in more. Yeah. And it was funny because my managers were, you know, we didn't know it was Netflix at the time. We were just waiting for, you know, where distribution. It's yeah. yeah. Where it's going. Um, and when we heard Netflix, we just like, I was with one of my, uh, one of the cast members, Dominic, and we were just like, let's go. Like that's odd. like net of all places for it to go. Netflix is like, that's the hub. Like that's, that's where a always- guaranteed way. A hundred million people are going to see it. It's great, man. Yeah. I mean, this is where it wants to be. And it's like a global release. And like, I'm just so excited. And I was like, here we go. Like, let's see what's next. Now I can finally do something that I might be able to get some radar action. Yeah. Um, Cause it's been so long that it's been no radar, you know, from Disney. And then it was disappear from Disney. A little bit of ABC was a little radars. A couple other, you know, networks started to reach out a little bit. But now Netflix, it's just like, you know, it's just a cool experience to be able to be a part of it. Because I've always looked at Netflix. I'm like, man, it'd be really dope to do something Netflix. Well, dude, That's on the agenda. You, you fucking earned it, dude. You, be <sighs> proud of that, man. I mean, I, I'm proud of you, dude. You know, Thank I mean, you, <laughs> it's awesome, man. I mean, what's, 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 you know, both, you know, what are you going for now? And, and what's, what are you looking and wanting to do now? You know, it's like one of those things where my, it's just my blinders are just open. Yeah. It's just, I, I've always found that if I ever try to pinpoint like what I want to do or what I like, I'll miss something. Yeah. You know, like even this movie, he's all that reading the character. I don't sing. I don't dance. I'm not, I'm not a douchebag. I was like, I'm an actor, but like, I don't want to be seen as that. Yeah, totally. Reading it. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this guys. Like I, I don't sing or dance. Like, how are we going to get around this? Like what is going on? Once I did it, I was liberated. Yeah. And it's funny that my little, my little pride mindset, you know, as an actor is harmful as an artist that kills you. It and really now does, I'm dude. looking at just open. I'm like, whatever comes my way, if I find a connection to it, we're doing it. E- ego can be a great and also the downfall of any artist or yeah. actor. And that's awesome, man. I'm so proud of you. It's a great film, dude. And dude, great things are in store for you. Do you have a production company or is that something you're interested in doing one day? I don't think so. I think, yeah. I, I think I'd rather just, you know, act and, uh, you know, start to produce my own projects as an actor. Um, Got it. They start to pick my scripts and, and build it from the ground up. Like a lot of the big actors are starting to do now. I think it's very cool to get into the producer realm um and just kind of build that up and i i want to do some brand stuff and i really want to build like an entire brand of clothes and really just build i kind of just want to build this like bigger business that i that i have in mind i love that man we all need something that's you know maybe adjacent but kind of out of you know i have this podcast and that keeps us inspired and focused on the things that we can't always control you know yeah. That's awesome, man. And it's good to talk. This is awesome because I, I saw it come in and I was like, absolutely, I want to do that. Like, talk about acting. This is like, this is great. This is oh, awesome. Dude, dude, I'm so glad we connected. We'll have to hang some time, you, me, yeah, and Sterling, absolutely. man. And, yeah. and dude, you know, final few questions for you, man. You know, 
you had some really, really tough years. And going back to what I said earlier, you know, myself, 100% would have jumped into drugs and alcohol and just spiraled out of control. You know, for all the all the people listening, whether young or old that are going through the ringer right now, any words of wisdom for how to deal with, with struggle and loss? You know, um, I definitely did drive, dive into the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I was one that I, uh, it's easy. It's so easy to numb it. Of course. Uh, but once you numb it enough, the pain still comes through the numb. And at that moment, I was like, this is so, I have something to deal with. Yeah. And this is just me running from it. Yeah. Putting it off. Yeah. Running. It's just putting it off. And it's like, you know, one of the, one of the most, the coolest <laughs> thing that I ever did. Um, and I never thought I would, I was always scared of like a psychedelic, but I, it's tough for me to consider this so much of a drug because it, it honestly changed my life. Um, and I did mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms. Dude. I still, I still do them. I don't drink or do anything, but mushrooms are the, are the one of the very few things like it actually, like I had this experience that like, it just changed my life yeah. and it blew my world. Like the things that I went through, the things that I dealt with, trust and me. And the it, things you learn about yourself, you know, you, and about the world, yeah. about like, your place in this world and like what you're doing. And like, it was one of those things that, you know, I thought it was just another experience, another outlet. And I ended up doing it. And it was just one of those things that it stuck with me and it actually got me out of any other drugs and any other alcohol. Yeah. You know, my family's got alcohol problems and, you know, I'll drink every now and then. Yeah. You know, I drink every now and then it's, you know, it's one of those things, but shrooms is really what got me away from everything else. It's so beautiful, man. It does the same for me. And I really appreciate you sharing that, man. And, 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 you know, for all the young, you know, people out there the the patents that have dreams that live maybe not in vegas in a mississippi or virginia you know and have ambitions of pursuing this wild dream whether it's acting painting or music any words of wisdom you might have for them people that you know are going through trying to figure out a way in yeah and a lot of a lot of you people that are that are trying that that way in um it's gonna be tough it's gonna be very hard don't underestimate it. Um, but another thing you're going to start to experience is that this business in this world, um, your work life and your personal life ride the same line. Yeah. You're going to start to live an artist lifestyle. You're not going to just live an artist, you know, nine to five, I'm an artist. You're going to become an artist. Um, and what that means when you become an artist is life gets very intense. Yeah. You're going to feel a lot more things. So um, it's very important to keep yourself in check because that's what's driving your workforce. Um, and just take care of yourself first. Dude, Peyton Manor, man, I love you, brother. You're a great oh, guy, dude. <laughs> dude, this is like, let's call this part one, man, because you're taking right. off. Come back on in the next project and let's do this again, dude. Absolutely. I love it, man. Dude, I got so much love for you. He's all that. Uh, What's the official day? August 27th. August 27th. I will have it drop. So today is August 27th. (laughs) (laughs) And dude, I am so fucking proud of you, man. Seriously, dude. You're you're a great guy and you're going to go so far. And you deserve it, man. And uh, to be continued. Thank you, man. To be continued. Absolutely. All right, brother. Take care. All right. Have a good one.